Sick! Sick! Keep your right up! Come on, move, man, move! Come on, stick, stick! Come on, man, come on! Keep up your right, keep up the right! All right, all right! Fred, go take a shot. Come on down here, Tiger, come on. Tiger, why don't you listen to me? Evans is going to get to you good unless you keep jabbing. I know it, already. I know it. Then why don't you do as I tell you? Maybe I should get down on my knees and beg you, is that it? Look, when I fight him, I'll do like you say. Tiger, wait a minute. I got everything I own on you, just remember that, huh? I won't forget it, Artie. He's a good boy, Artie. He'll come through for you. Who asked you? Well, I was just... Don't saying. bother me. Just get out of your way. Andy, I want to talk to you. Sure, Ziggy. Over here. What's on your mind, Zig? What do you want me to do? I got some bad news for you, Andy. Your boy, Ralph, he's had an accident. What are you talking about? On the way to the training camp, the truck hit the car. He's dead. My boy? My boy dead? You're lying, Ziggy. He can't be dead. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. He begged me to let him go. I couldn't help it. You dirty, rotten murderer. I'll get you. You killed him. You killed him! <laughs> He killed my boy. cheer, hiss, and shout. On an early May morning, those same voices had forgotten him. Only the police and the priest, Father Duggan, had any interest in the ex-boxer. I was hoping to locate you in your office this morning. Have you seen the morning paper? Oh, you mean the mayor's new commission, hmm? Oh, no, 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 not that. Andy Keel, the man the police are looking for. The one they say killed his boss, the owner of the gym. I, uh... I have him down at my place. You what? I want your advice on what to do, how to proceed. If 
Father, my advice to you is to tell the police where he is so they can find him. Oh, I will, I will. I'll call them right away. We can meet them back at the parish. We? Herb, I know what you're going to say. This isn't your kind of practice. You're a corporation lawyer. But this man needs the best lawyer he can get. Father, there are criminal lawyers, plenty of them. I don't know them. I know you, just like I know Andy. You see, his son was killed in an accident yesterday. He blames the man the police say he murdered. And what does he say? He doesn't. I ran into him near the parish last night. He, he was talking gibberish. And according to this, not only did he kill the man, but he stole $500. And this is what makes it look so bad, Herb. He was handing out money to strangers. Why, he gave me $240, just like that. But where did he get it? I couldn't find out. I took him in and put him to sleep. Herb, I know this man. He wouldn't give me blood money. Just talk to him. I'll do whatever you say. I could use this phone be before we leave. All right, Father, we'll call the police. Miss Brent, get me Lieutenant Weston. It's all right, Andy. Sit down. Go ahead, sit down. I had to call the police, Andy, but I brought Mr. Maris with me. He's going to try to help you. There's no use trying to help me now, Father. So you feel sorry for yourself. That's your excuse for killing. You just don't care. I stopped killing long ago. But last night, I could have killed Ziggy. Why do you blame him for your son's death? Ralph wanted to go to Ziggy's training camp to work during his vacation. I didn't want him to get no smell of the fight game. Ziggy told me he wouldn't let him go to work in the place. He promised me he, he wouldn't let him go near it. But he did. I wanted him to finish school and go to college. That's what I've been working for. All these years, 16 years old, he was just a boy. Where'd you get the money you gave away to Father Duggan and the others? Money? Yes. You were giving money away near the gym to strangers. Giving money away? That must have been the money I was saving for Ralph. How much did you have? Three hundred and... I don't remember. I... I only used to count it once in a while. Count it? You mean you carried it with you? No. In a box. In my lock. Andy, now think very carefully. This is very important. Did you kill Ziggy before you left the gym that night? I can't remember. It doesn't make any difference now. My boy, my boy. It's gone. Come right in. We haven't even made an arrest yet. What are you doing here? Is this our man? Now, right, let's go. Satisfied, Consulate? Lieutenant, I'm not. 
There's nothing in your files to explain why a man bent on avenging his son's death would steal $500 just to give away to strangers. Oh, look, I'm sorry about his son's death, but my sympathy ends when he murders a man. You're jumping to conclusions, Lieutenant. He admits blaming Ziggy for his son's death. He admits attacking him. There are witnesses who broke it up. Witnesses who overheard him threaten to kill Ziggy, two of them. But did they witness the murder? No, of course they didn't. But tell me, Counselor, where did Andy Keel get all the money he was handing out so freely? Joe Willard, Ziggy's partner, told us he gave Ziggy $500 that evening. Andy claims he saved it over the years. On the pay he got, well, he barely made enough to live on. And that story about him keeping in a cigar box in his locker, my men searched the gym and everywhere else he went that evening and came up with nothing. No, Counselor, you give me one piece of evidence that contradicts what I already have, and you won't get any argument out of me. Lieutenant, I'll admit there's a great deal of circumstantial evidence against him, but I can't buy it for one very good reason. Because I believe the opinion of one man who says that Andy would never touch blood money. And whoever stole Ziggy's money is the man who murdered him. Lieutenant Weston told me that Willard gave Ziggy $500 the night he was murdered. At least that was Willard's story. He was in no mood to talk when I introduced myself. I told you no, Al. For the last time, no. Now, will you feed it? Are you Mr. Joe Willard? Yeah. My name is Maris, Herbert Maris. I'm an attorney. I'd like to talk to you about that $500 you said you gave Ziggy the other night. Haven't you got any respect for the dead, mister? Sure, I have respect. As a matter of fact, I didn't expect to find you around here today. How else do you expect these bums to train? The fighters still got to train no matter what. Do you think they got respect for Ziggy? Let me tell you something, mister. I'm the only one in this town that understood Ziggy. The only one. Everyone else figured him for a heart of stone. What about Andy? Ah, he was like the rest. But I didn't figure him for this. Joe, you gotta listen to me. You gotta give me a friend, please. I told you to beat it. I'm busy now. Get out of here. Was there ever any trouble between Ziggy and Andy? Trouble? Oh, they had words once in a while. Zig used to let Andy's kid work out with some of the boys. You know, nothing rough, just some, you know, light sparring. I thought Ziggy had promised Andy not to have his son around here. He did. The kid kept pestering him. What else could he do? Like I told you, he was a softy underneath. Was there ever any other trouble? That was enough. Andy get plenty mad at Zig. What do you say, huh? That's enough. I got plenty of work. What about the $500 you claim you gave Ziggy? What do you mean, claim? I'm telling you, I gave him 500. That's an awful lot of money. Why'd you need that much cash? Uh, how do I know? Maybe to place a bet, maybe just to carry it around. Look, Zig and I had a rule. No questions. And if you think I didn't do it, forget it. Artie Manning and his boy saw me give Zig the dough that night here. And Andy was here too, sweeping the joint. Thanks. I had tried several times that day without success to contact Artie Manning and his boy, Tiger Roy. It became apparent they were avoiding me. I didn't like the idea of approaching them the night of the fight, but I had a life at stake. Come in. No interviews now. Can't you reporters get that through your heads? After the fight, not now. I'm not a reporter. Aren't you Artie Manning? Yeah, what do you want? I represent Andy Keel. Get out of here. I only want a few words. I said get out of here. We got nothing to say now or any time. The cops have got it all. This concerns murder, Mr. Manning. What's the matter with you? My boy's got a fight tonight. It's all right, Artie. Only tomorrow, huh, mister? After the fight? That's the end of the prelims. Let's go, Tiger. Hi, Chance. I told you to stay away from here. Now beat it. How about that? He thinks he owns the joint. Hey, I saw you yesterday. I'm Al Baker. I've been waiting for you. You're a friend of Willard's, right? You want to make a short bet? I got a real sure thing on a fight tonight. Thanks, I'm not interested. Only a ten spot, that's all. This is it. You make a fast bet and you clean up. Try somebody else. 
Only a ten spot. Okay, okay, don't pay me to after the fight. You look like an honest man. Lay your dough against Tiger in the eighth. I thought the newspaper said he had three to two odds. I'm trying to tell you, I'm in the know. And don't bet the odds, they're for suckers. Well, thanks, but that isn't what I was looking for. What about the ten bucks, mister? You won't regret it! Tiger lost his fight in the eighth round. The sports writers called it a lucky punch. Al Baker called it a fix. I wondered what Artie Manning called the results. What do I have to do to get you off my back? I told you he was mad at Ziggy. He even said he was going to get Ziggy. But did you see him kill Ziggy? Mister, when a guy like Andy tells me he's going to fix me, he's just as liable to kill me as not. Are you sure that Andy saw the money that Willard gave to Ziggy? Well, he was there. Willard was peeling them off like there was bananas. He must have seen it. But can you honestly say that he did see it? Are you sure? I'm not sure of anything anymore. Well, in that case, Mr. Manning, how can I be sure you left the gym before Andy? Because I say so. My boy got dressed and left with me. He was with me all the time. Now, leave me alone, okay? Your boy had a tough fight last night. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I was just curious how I could get a tip a few minutes before the fight that he was going to lose in the eighth round. What are you telling me? That my boy took a dive? You better have proof to back those words. That kind of talk is dangerous, Mr. Maris. Real dangerous. Manning had dared me to prove that he fixed his boy's fight. I wanted to prove that Andy Keel was innocent of murder. Although I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, I felt that somehow the two were connected. What I needed now was some straight talk from someone who wasn't afraid to tell the truth. Yes, what is it? I'd like to talk to your husband, Mrs. Roy. Well, I'm sorry, he won't see anyone. This is very important, Mrs. Roy. It's a legal matter. I don't care. You can't bother Tiger now. Please go. Who is it, honey? Oh, you're the lawyer. Come on in. My name is Maris. Yeah, I know. Say, I'm awfully sorry for the way Artie acted last night, but you know how it is before a fight. Uh, nerves, you know. Is he always that hard to talk to? Artie? No. Oh, sit down. Honey. No, Artie's the sweetest guy in the world. Anyone can get along with him. Oh? Sure. He's just been nervous the past few days. A fight, I guess. Was Ziggy interested in your fight? Ziggy? No, not that I know of. The night he was murdered, did you leave the gym first? Why are you bothering, Tiger? He's already told the police everything. Look, honey, I have nothing to hide. This can't be helped, Mrs. Roy. A man is charged with murder. He may be innocent. Innocent? Why, Andy was out of his mind. It was like he thought that, that, that Ziggy personally murdered the kid with a knife or something. I... I... I had a feeling he might try something, but gee, I didn't think anything like this would happen. It's too bad, but you never can tell with these has-beens. Was there anyone else in the gym when you left? Perhaps you can remember something or someone. No such luck. The place was empty. I even remember looking around before me and Artie left. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry you lost your fight, Tiger. But then you don't seem too unhappy about it. What am I going to do, cry? You can't win them all. You mean you have to take a dive sometimes. That's what Manning made you do, wasn't it? Take a dive. What are you saying? Get out of this place. Get out. You'd better do like she says, mister, before I tear you apart. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on, no more, huh? There, now, that's better. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, but he just shouldn't have said that. Sure, I know. Look, honey, you can't let them guys get you down. Now, look, go lie down for a while, huh? Okay? Artie? Look, 
Look, I gotta see you. No, right away. I can't later. Okay, then. Uh, half hour. Mr. Maris, I can't go through with this. I'll be finished in this town. You're finished already, Baker. You'll talk. What's this about? What's this punk been telling you? All right, calm down, Manning. Thank you, Mike. All right, Baker. Tell Manning what you told me before. Well, let's have it, Baker. A guy I know, he asked me to do him a favor. He was at the arena the night of the fight. He gave me an envelope and told me to give it to some bookie. But not to say who it was from. He gave me a short buck for it. I'll give you the rest, Manning. Baker steamed open the envelope, found $500 in cash and a note. A bet against your boy, Evans in the eighth. Then he sealed the envelope and delivered it. What's that got to do with me? That was your boy betting against himself, Tiger Roy. You dirty liar. He couldn't have given you a thing. He didn't have that kind of dough. His purse was all tied up. I swear, Artie, it's the truth. Why was his purse locked up, Manning? He owed me a lot of dough, money I'd advanced to him. His wife was in hospital a lot. Al, will you swear in court that the envelope contained $500 in the note? Sure, sure. But I don't know what this is all about. Where would Tiger get that much dough? That's what we want to find out from you, Manny. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, that's no good. Now, I believed him. I told him not to worry. About what? That night, before Ziggy got it, Tiger and me left the dressing room together, all right, but when we got downstairs, he said he forgot his wallet. Told me he'd catch up with me down the street. He was only gone a few minutes. I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. But I guess that's when he gave it to Ziggy and grabbed the dough. He saw Willard hand it to Zeke. What a dirty puck. He saw he could lay it off on Andy. That Andy would take the rap. A dirty punk. Where were you supposed to meet him, Mrs. Roy? I used car lot. The address is over there. It's on the east side of town, not too far. I'm I'm sorry, Mrs. Roy. I didn't mean it. I only wanted the dough so I could get my wife out of here, someplace where she'd get well. But Ziggy wouldn't listen to me, and I guess I panicked. I had to get out. Fighting. Fighting for what? A couple of lousy bucks so I could end up a has-been like Andy? Take him to the car. Well, oh, Counselor, I, I guess your client is a lucky man. Not so lucky. Maybe not. 